Thank you, thank you, Ian. Um, over the next sort of 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to give a very brief run through on the power of integrated data and Bovis. So uh, I'll be probably moving quite quickly, but um, bear with me. Um, firstly, in the industry, in the agri-food supply chain, there's so much data there, but quite often it's held in very isolated pockets and not in linked together. By linking that data together, it really opens up the possibility of a wide, wide range of applications. These could be things like supply chain risk management, resilience testing, forecasting, all, all possible when you start to integrate data. Again, we can start to look at the assessment of policies, um, either pre a policy being implemented or post a policy being implemented, and then we can really start to make progress on genetic evaluations, genetic improvement. Again, by having data linked together and integrated into databases, you can really start to look at developing really unique, customized, on-farm decision support tools. Again, this is not a new, a new venture, a new, new sort of topic at all. It's been used in other parts of the, uh, the economy. Um, for example, the medicine, social science, and engineering. The UK government uses integrated databases across all different departments to create indexes to better um, allocate funds to different areas of the economy. Again, the UK agriculture has picked up on the importance and the potential of integrating data through a, release, a recent um, proposal or for the agri-tech strategy to put in place a centre for informatics and sustainability matrix. Again, so the government's putting forward £10 million um, to set up the centre, matched with £10 million of industry funding. So again, there's big, big hopes and big, big potential from integrating data, and AFPI's involved in that bid consortium. So what's happening currently within the UK in terms of um, integration of data? And just as an example, and there'll be much more, many, many other examples, but in genetics, um, we're linking data uh, to create genetic evaluations. As an example, with the uh, Edinburgh Genetics uh, and their e-genes, um, they're using 45 million cattle records from the national database, linking that up with carcass information, the VIA images, um, and linking it up with pedigree breed society information, um, on-farm records and, and typing of animals, and also bringing in genomics. And again, Professor Plasto will talk about maybe genomics a bit further on. But by linking that data together, we can really start um, with sort of the intelligent data management, really start to integrate and analyze robustly uh, and provide information to make better breeding decisions, to deliver on what Sam and other speakers have talked about this morning, those animals meeting the market spec in the most efficient manner. Again, coupling that data together allows you to develop these decision support tools. And again, we'll touch on a couple of those tools that we've developed in AFPI and in Bovis later. What impact can we have? Um, again, I've focused on the agri agricultural industry. I pulled together a couple of examples. Um, again, using e-genes as an example in the UK, through integrating data beyond just pedigree information, so that's bringing in that integrated commercial uh, industry type data with pedigree information, with genomics, we get a 75% increase in our rate of farm profitability, which is valued at about 54 million pounds per year. Again, if we look at the dairy industry, the PLI index, which is a sort of a breeding index, has increased the profitability of the dairy sector by 600 odd million over a five year period and again reduced greenhouse gas emissions. So just using data more efficiently, more effectively, we can make major, major differences. Um, AFPI, uh, developing the PIGAS system for, for pig information and grading, um, has sort of come up to the, we can realise a 30, 30 million pound saving across GB and NI through delivering carcasses in line with market requirements. And that's all being identified through integrating data. Again, internationally, and I know Graham will touch on some of these later on, there's a wide range of projects internationally where you look at genetic markers, genomics, and, and linking that together into good databases. Examples include um, reducing bovine respiratory disease, improving genetics in terms of feed efficiency. And again, there are companies out there and, and valuation companies really integrating data, like the Irish Cattle Breeding Federation. And again, we have a member in the audience here from the US um, trying to create more user-friendly tools to, to capitalize on that integrated data such as Agri, Agri and Bioinformatics Company. So what progress have we made in Northern Ireland? How, where are we in terms of moving our data? Our data? Again, AFPI, through DART and AgriSearch funding, um, have really created the bovine information system, or BOVIS. You'll have heard it mentioned a few times this morning. The minister mentioned the uh, first thing. Again, we've started uh, and focused initially on the carcass information from Northern Ireland abattoirs and merging that data with the, the data held within our AFIS system. And again, we've really got a strength here with this APHIS system because we're probably uh, the envy of many countries in the quality and the quantity of data we hold there uh, in terms of traceability. So how does it work in practice? Uh, I'm, apologies for moving quite quickly. I'm um, covering a lot of years' work in a very short period of time. Um, it works in practice by basically linking up different aspects of the, of the different databases. So on the left-hand side of the screen, we've got slaughter information coming across from the abattoirs on a nightly basis. Right-hand side of the screen, we've got data coming across from our, our government APHIS database. 
again, everything's matched securely and really accurately to ensure data is correct. Um, and again, we're really working in collaboration with the main processors across Northern Ireland. The database in the background has well over three and a half million records in it, so it's a very strong, very robust database. Again, it's very much focused on a collaborative effort involving um, some of the main players in the beef processing industry, but also CAFRI, AFBI, LMC, all involved in the process, and Ag Research as well. The benefits of the database are widespread throughout the supply chain. Um, just this, this particular slide, we're looking at the industry level benefits. Again, in conjunction with the LMC, it really gives an increased or a, a comprehensive overview of the Northern Ireland beef production systems each year. It allows us to really go into depth in identifying breeding strategies to, to meet those market requirements in the most efficient manner. And then it also allows us to review and monitor the impact of decisions at policy level very, very accurately and almost in real time. But at the bottom of, of the slide there, we've got, it really provides this framework. We're really putting the structures in place to really get serious about genetic evaluations and really opens up the possibility of real, more detailed research programs. As an example of some of the outputs of industry level analysis, it's just a quick slide that shows the, the sort of numbers of, of herds presenting uh, animals for slaughter over the past five years and the, the, the numbers of animals in total. Uh, we can see the number of herds presenting for slaughter has dropped to 25%. So our industry is changing, it's evolving, it's, it's moving. But again, we've had an, an increase in the mean number of animals presented from each herd by 23%. So we can monitor those trends, develop policies based on that information. We can also use the data to really identify rooms for improvement. And one of the ones that's been touched on earlier is carcass gain and how that is a key driver on profitability, greenhouse gases, and many other factors. Again, this, this quick graph here, um, which is a variation in steer carcass weight, like for a given age, so age is along the bottom of the axis and carcass weight up the, the left-hand edge. And basically what it shows to me is basically at 20 months of age, we have 62% of our animals hitting the market required weights, so, so 280 to 380 kilos. Similar value at 25 months of age, similar value at 30 months of age. We can get our animals to slaughter weights, appropriate market slaughter weights, much, much earlier. So why can we not improve that efficiency, narrow down those, that variation? Again, using the database, we can really start to look at reproduction and reproductive performance. Again, we've got a couple of graphs here. Um, and again, Jim's touched on them earlier on. Calvin interval of the sucker herd, key driver in profitability. We need, a, we need to produce a calf every year, as close to that as possible. But again, using the database, we're able to identify out the trends. You'll see there's quite a long tail in the graph where these delayed calving intervals, these extended calving intervals. Over 50% of the calving intervals are greater than 380 days. And Sam's probably leading the way with intervals sitting down at sort of 350 days. So he's, he's on the left-hand side of the average, or the most common value. In terms of age at first calving, again, uh, Sam touched on that as well, is really how can we improve that efficiency, which again is linked to profitability, greenhouse gases. Using bovis, we can identify issues, and again, we can see here age at first calving along the, the x-axis and the percentage of heifers on, on the y-axis. 19% of animals are calving between 22 and 26 months of age, with the vast majority beyond that. Why is that? Why, why can we not calve our animals at the most appropriate age and the most efficient age. Again, a final sort of example of what we can use BOVIS for, and um, we can start to model change. Again, using the, the, the background data, the three, three and a half million records, we can start to look at, right, this particular table here shows confirmation, the associated percentage of cattle achieving those grades, and the carcass weight associated with that. But what would happen, for, for example, if markets opened or market requirements changed and they wanted different carcass weights? So if we would just reduce the average carcass weight by 10 kilos across those weight ranges, or, what would happen? Well, very quickly we can see a, a change in confirmation, and the proportion of animal achievement drops, uh, changes significantly for different grades. But putting that down onto sort of bottom line figures, a 10 kilogram reduction in slaughter weight reduces the proportion of animals achieving in spec uh, market required uh, grades to 3%. So we drop 3% in, in the quality of our animals achieving in spec. Financially, that equ equates to about 5% reduction in income to producers. Again, modeled just on steers. So again, we can quick, quickly model and forecast what could happen if, if things change. Again, so most of that information is coming from once the animal has been processed and in the slaughter, but how do we get our animals to achieve the right weights and the right slaughter weights? Again, there's been a range of online tools developed um, within the BOVIS um, system to help producers calve their animals at the right age, achieve target growth curves throughout their, their production cycle so they're, they're again, being slaughtered at the right age, the right weights. And I know Dr. Francis Lively is going to touch on that in his presentation later. So at a producer level, what can we do? Again, with having the data integrated, AFPI has developed a range of online tools. The first one we're going to focus on is the online carcass benchmarking tool. 
And with no manual data entry, and that's critical, um, nobody wants to sit and type information on, it's automatically populated for the producer. Every Northern Ireland producer now has the opportunity to view, sort, analyze, and benchmark his carcass information. That's probably quite unique. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not aware of any other country that currently has that capability. We can judge your performance against market requirements. We can judge your performance against your peers, how you're performing against the producers of similar type of cattle in a similar time period. And again, we can look at different time periods. So say, for example, you've um, changed your management practice. How did that affect your performance? It can all be monitored quite quickly. Again, all this information is all um, available to producers through Dart Online Services. You'll see the little circle on the left-hand side with the bovis link. That's where if you want to go and find your, your bovis data. That's where you log in. Again, trying to sort of show the, the benefits and highlight the benefits of Bovis in, in, a few, in a few minutes is very difficult. So I've just pulled together one slide showing some of the outputs you could achieve from Bovis for producer. So this is, again, the benchmarking report. This particular producer is producing continental animals. It could be limousines. It, it could narrow that down to limousines, charlies, whatever it happened to be. But it focused on pure continentals. It gives you the number of animals, the weights achieved, grade, fat class, age, carcass gain, and the proportion of those animals meeting the market requirements. So again, real-time information quickly available to the producer. It can then start benchmarking that information against the top 10% of producers uh, based on carcass gain. So how, how are they growing compared to the top growing guys? It can also benchmark against the average producer. So is he, much, is he above the average, below the average, etc.? And again, you can start benchmarking against different time periods, benchmarking against different breeds. So there's a lot of capability in there. And again, probably some of you will have seen some of the little booklets in the way in that sort of goes through some of those examples. So again, examples include uh, comparing performance between breeds and then a herd across herds, looking at the performance of different terminal sires, performance of homegrown cattle versus bought-in cattle. Um, all the data is, again, exportable, so you can bring that out and start to do more detailed analysis on it. And again, the comparison over different date ranges. And again, this, this system wasn't developed purely by me as such in terms of sitting there thinking it all through. It was through a consultation process with different stakeholders in the industry, the primary producers, CAFRI, LMC, etc., all involved in making sure a system was fit for purpose and was delivering what the industry needed. The key features, and again, it's, it's worth stressing, it's automatic. Data is automatically there. If you, ask, if you don't have it automated and asking producers to type things in, it won't happen. So it's an automatic process, no data entry. It's online access and it's freely available to any producer. Uh, access can be granted to consultants, veterinarians, um, data is exportable to agri-software systems, etc. So it's very much available as a, as a technology transfer tool. Um, again, we've been online, it's wide reaching. Um, and again, it's this framework for genetic evaluations. But one of the key things we have to think about as an industry is SAR recording. If we're going to get serious about moving our genetics forward and trying to capitalize on the potential for increased feed conversion efficiency or net feed efficiencies, increased health, fertility, etc. We have to get serious about SAR recording and really look at our system. So where could we go to in the future? Um, again, we've started the process, we've started to integrate the databases, but where could we get to? Again, it's building around this concept of measure, monitor and manage. If you have the data and have the information, you can really make them proper and informed decisions. So really we can start to basically utilize our APHIS database more. There's so much information in there that would be incredibly valuable if we can really harness it and, and capitalize on it. We can build in more information from the supply chain. So all the different aspects of the supply chain from the primary producer right through to that meat on the plate for the consumer. We can try to capitalize and integrate it further into the system. We can start to bring on more on-farm measurements, um, be it animal performance, be it veterinary medicine, drug use, et cetera. Start capitalizing, bringing that all in, encapsulate it in one place. We really have to start exploring the world of genomics. Um, it's an area we haven't really touched on that uh, much depth in Northern Ireland yet, but it's something we really have to get into and get more understanding of and incorporate it into these um, more integrated databases. This will lead us on to, very difficult to see at the back of the room, more accurate, more robust genetic evaluations. So we can really pick the animals more appropriate for our systems, most appropriate for our markets, and, and deliver what the consumer wants. Again, on the back of that, we can deliver even more accurate, more robust, and a bigger range of decision support tools to make life potentially a bit easier and, and help inform decisions at farm level. And again, all this information, again, as Jim touched on, um, is, is highlighted in the Go and Growth report. And again, Bovis as a system is highlighted in there as something we have to promote and encourage and develop further, along with the potential to try and develop something in the sheep industry in the, in the, in the firm, firm or form of Bovis. So key messages. Um, I'm not doing too bad for time, I'm down to 30 seconds. <laughs> Again, the key messages are after you've developed the foundations of a really world-class leading uh, integrated livestock database. 
And again, really in a, in a collaborative effort, we've, we've got to this stage at present, but we really have to focus more and collaborate and work together harder to really realize the, the true potential benefits of such a system. Again, that collaboration was again highlighted in Going for Growth. We can encourage the use of the online tools, which Jim mentioned, and really start to really explore the capabilities of a real industrial level analysis. We really need to further develop the scope of the database and embrace genetic improvement if we're really going to get serious. Again, by having the database and the systems in place, it opens up real, real opportunities for increased returns to the industry. And again, the final sort of message is really, if we're wanting to get serious about improving our animals, improving their breeding stock and improving our outputs, we have to look at our SAR reporting system because it's fundamental for any genetic improvement process. So that's me, and I'm through fairly quickly. Thank you very much.